Papaday Guam and USA, uh, this video and all the rest of my videos are basically going to be dedicated to everybody out there who wants to learn more about Chamorro cuisine and a little bit more about other ethnic cuisines um, that may not know how to cook. My heart goes out to all of those Chamorro uh, college students and all the other uh, ethnic groups that are out there that want to know more about our cooking. And so here we go. Tonight I'm going to have uh, basically a dish that's pretty much uh, hit in Guam and it's going to be the Japanese curry. If you've been to Alamoana Mall, if you've been to Hawaii, you know what I'm talking about. Now this is not the curry from the Thai influence or any Oriental influence. It's going to be the curry that we in Guam love to indulge in. So it's Japanese curry. Um, the first ingredient that I want to inform you about is golden curry mix. Golden curry mix is going to be the curry mix you want to get to make this specific dish. And all the other ingredients are pretty basic. Now as you can see, I have here all the basics as I did in my last show. You have your chicken cut up, you have your onions, your garlic, onions again <laughs> as the side because your onions here are onions for your mixture and your taste. The onions here are basically for your garnishing. Now this, these potatoes are here for your big shebang. The only thing the yeast tomatoes are missing are the cold water. You do not want to have potatoes cut the way they need to be cooked. You want to have them submerged in water. So here I am. Get them submerged, otherwise they'll turn all brown. So as long as they're submerged in water, it's going to be delicious. As you guys can see, I have here my traditional Chamorro pot, purchased straight from the Philippines. That's a big pot. Yes, it is. <laughs> and we're only making a small dish. Chamorro. <laughs> okay, John, can you step back here as I grab my next ingredient? Now, when we're cooking chicken curry, which is what we're making tonight, um, you want to use vegetable oil. It really doesn't matter if you're Chamorro, but here it is, vegetable oil. Now, I'm going to estimate with a pot with this deep, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to throw this onto a high, oops, wrong side, put it on high, get it ready to go, and um, because in the last video I had, I didn't use measurements, this time I'm going to use measurements, just so that everyone can get a closer and a more, more precise look at how to do things, so I'm going to do three tablespoons of pure vegetable oil. Now, this vegetable oil is basically going to be used to piece up my onions and my garlic, which is right here. And that's going to make the sauce base for this chicken curry. See how it's just sitting there like, what? <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thanks, John. See, I put the oil in the cupboard for the pots and pans. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make use of this kitchen like it should be used. Put myself on a little ladle here. Get a saucer ready to go. And this is a double burning oven so it's pretty ready to go we're gonna just basically sit down here and wait for this pot to heat that oil up but in the meantime so we all so we all can get into the limelight of what we're here for i want to just introduce you again to my Donnie de nancy wow. this is the non-salty alternative to pacific red hot and if anyone has a problem with that, bring it on. <laughs> but here you go. Pacific Red Hot at its very least. This is the non-salty, more delicious, more traditional, more gofmongi alternative to that product. Which you guys will soon see in Kayla Supermarkets. Now, the reason why I'm making chicken curry is because it's a local favorite. 
And although it's not a tomorrow food, it's one of the rubs we indulge in, right? Right on. So, let's remember, when we prepare our potatoes, we want to make sure that we submerge it in water. Because otherwise, it's going to turn all brown and gooey, icky. Just put it in water. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have our onions here. This is the garnish onions. This right here is our onions and garlic, which is basically going to give us that taste taste. Um, so that when we do mix up our liquid, which is water, and the golden curry mix, plus the chicken that we're going to use, that's what it's going to take to make the most delicious chicken curry. So, now that I know that my oil is simmering hot, I'm going to throw this in here. Let's start with the garlic. Okay. So I'm going to grab the wooden ladle because these kind of tomorrow pots are the most serious pots. You don't want to use too much oil because, you know, the juices that seep out from the chicken and the onion, the garlic, it's going to make that paste you need. No need for the high cholesterol. Just use a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right? Stir that baby up. Make it all look more than food. Okay, so... Now that that's done, let me just show you this. You see how we have a plate of defrosted chicken and the water droppings from the chicken? No! Don't do it! You have to strain the chicken. Get that freaking water out at all costs. Don't throw it in like that. See? So, now it's ready. <laughs> so... Now you're good. Once you throw that chicken with the simmering onion and garlic, the goal is going to be to basically have it brown or turn turn different colors, more like a white color. And in order for us to do that and achieve it to this, we're going to have a cup of it. So comfy, comfy a little uta, the nanga, tapman masa. But let's leave it here for a while, um, we're going to want to have it brown. And that was part one of this video. So again, in part one, we showed you that, you know, the ingredients and additives to this particular dish are going to be patatas, or potatoes, submerged in water. The onions and garlic, which we had on this um, saucer, had gone in for the taste garnishing, and have now been included to our chicken. And once this is browned, we're ready for part two of the video, where... We're going to add the varnish onion, and we're going to add the Dori de Nancy, which is my specialty. <laughs> um, and then, once that's taken care of, I'm going to show you what to do with this in part two. So, thank you very much for tuning in to Josh Bachnick and uh, Pacific Guam. Just to recap, do the potatoes need to be put in water? Um, they must be submerged in water, my man. Okay. Thank I. You.